what's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz from GuitarJams.com. Uh, we are honored to have Tim Pierce visiting us again. Thanks for coming by again, my man. Thank you. I made better time this time, I think. Got here <laughs> Perfect. Two minutes quicker. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, real quick, you know, Tim's a session master. In fact, you just finished playing on a whole Neil Diamond album. Yes. And uh, we talked about that. It sounded really exciting. But you've got great insight as a professional guitar player. You've lived it. You've experienced the highs and the lows. Um, the glamour <laughs> and the not so glamorous. Uh, but anyway, you, you have a great YouTube channel. We just want you guys to support Tim and check out his YouTube channel right in that link down there. But not only that, you're going to get some insight right now. You're going to break down uh, some ZZ Top style stuff. And, uh, you know, you love Billy Gibbons. Right? Uh, I saw ZZ Top when I was a little kid, and I think there were steer horns on the amplifiers. We can check that <laughs> on the internet now, but. <laughs> Nice. I don't think I imagined that. I, you know, I lo I've always loved ZZ Top. Yes. First record. So, yeah. Billy Gibbons, yeah. riffs, yeah. licks, all that stuff. So yeah. let's zoom in and we'll check it out. Yeah. So one of the great things about this riff is you can kind of park your hand in one place. So if you take your third finger on the D string on the seventh fret and just kind of park it right here, that'll, that'll be where the hand sits for most of it. And then there's one other position down here. So it's really easy in a way because your hand only goes two places and it spends most of its time in this one spot which is pretty familiar to a lot of us. So once again, third finger, D string, seventh fret. And you're gonna toggle between a note that's a whole step below, two frets below. So as we do the riff, you're gonna have your third finger here and then your first finger here and you're kinda gonna go back and forth in a way. And so for me, a couple of other details that you can learn later or you can concentrate on now. It seems like there's a bit of a mute going on. In other words, it seems like the palm needs to rest right here to kind of mute the string a little, and that's kind of part of the toughness of the riff. If you play it open, it sounds good, but if you play it muted, it sounds like it's supposed to. <laughs> so I park my the, the flesh from this hand right <laughs> right in here and then I grab this note and vibrato it a little bit and this is something you can learn later too or now with vibrato I had a great teacher and he explained to me that vibrato is shaking the wrist and the best way to learn vibrato is by shaking the guitar and exaggerating watching your wrist go up and down you don't want it to be your finger even that looks shaky you want vibrato to come from your wrist turning and it literally this part of the wrist goes up and this part of the wrist goes down so if you want to work on vibrato comes from the wrist and I'm getting in the camera turning the wrist like that so you'll see me vibrato this you can work on that later you can work on it now it's up to you so here's the riff I'll slow it way down So the first part of the riff is double hit, and then jump to this string, G string, fifth fret with your next finger, hit that one note, and then land back on your original target note, your anchor note, right there. So really slow. faster in time. And for starters, you can do all downstrokes. Later, you can experiment with down up. Although, I don't think that's what it is. It sounds more natural to me if it's all downstrokes. repeat this phrase four times. I'm going to play it faster now. Next move, we do the same thing one string over. 
So bring your third finger over to the G string, seventh fret, park it there, start the riff there. And here's a funny move. You have to go up one fret to compensate for the funny thing about the guitar where everything moves up one fret. So this part of the riff, and it's pretty easy, it's pretty natural. You don't do that like you did on the other phrase. You do. It's the same. It's a fourth up from. So back to the second part of the riff. Double hit. Pull. Back to the anchor note. And then you go back to the original riff for two rounds. I'll play the whole cycle. Just two. Two more. And that's a really good move because it's easy to do. So you play the riff four times in the first position, you play it twice in the second position, uh, your hand's in the same position, but in the second spot, and then back two times in the first spot. And then to finish off the riff, the next thing, you just hit the low E note. So. And this is a really cool phrase. You hit the low E, and then you take your third finger and slide it up to the fourth fret, and then octave E here on the D string second fret, and then either, you know, I think I'll use my third finger for this, so third finger B string third fret, so I'm going to back up a little bit. And one little trick, after you play the low part of the phrase, you're going to want to mute string over ring, string ring with this part of your hand. Even though I got to say that sounds pretty cool. So heck, leave it open if you like the sound. Next piece, open D string. And that's kind of the heart of a D7 chord. I mean, the previous phrase was kind of the heart of an E7 chord. I just discovered this while I was teaching it. Those are elements of an E7 chord that he's kind of arpeggiating. And we move to a D7 chord, which is just the first piece of a... And what that is is open D, G string, second fret, second finger, and then B string, first finger, <laughs> first fret. And we're almost done. So. And then this really cool. And that one benefits from cool open strings also. Open G string. E note on the D string, second fret and then this bluesy minor third of the A. And literally, you can think about it as just these four notes of the guitar. You're just picking through from the G string down to the E string on the, the bottom four strings of the guitar. I'll make this make sense right now. And then you jump right back up to the riff there. So to review. And I think I'm kind of using all downstrokes, because that's a legit way to make it sound tough. Okay, I'm going to do this series one more time.
and then you come up and start the whole thing over again. Tasty. Yeah, I'm, I'm adding thank that you. to my arsenal now. <laughs> good, good. Uh, once again, we want to thank Tim Pierce for hanging out in the studio. Also, check out his YouTube channel. He's got a lot of cool stuff for you to check out. Thanks for coming by again. Thank you.